Good morning. Welcome to the 7 a.m. grind. My name is Kurt. I have my Bible and I have my cup of coffee and I'm glad that you were here and uh, actually I don't think anybody's here yet but I'm glad that you will be watching this in just a little bit. Hey, we're going to be in Galatians still. We're in the second chapter, verses 2 and 3 and let me give some background real quick before I read our verses for today. Um, just to catch people up or maybe as a refresher to catch people up. Remember, Paul wrote this letter to the people of Galatia. Galatia is an area where he went on his second or his first missionary journey. He spent about two years there and he started a lot of churches, had a lot of people converted. And really a whole lot of Gentiles, which are non-Jewish people, were converted over into Christianity. Well, as Paul was wrapping up his missionary journey, he learned that all these false teachers, or what they called Judaizers, were coming into Galatia and teaching a false gospel. They were telling Paul's converts that they really weren't saved because they had to do something else. They were saying that trusting Jesus wasn't enough, but you also had to get circumcised and baptized and really uh, follow the Jewish lifestyle. You had to become Jewish because they believed that the gospel was only for Jews. So therefore, for a Gentile to get saved, they had to convert to being Jewish and go through all the rituals and, the, and obey the law of Moses, especially when it came to food and festivals. Now, we know that's not true because of what Jesus did on the cross in the New Testament. It fulfilled the law of Moses, and Paul's preaching the gospel that Jesus told him to preach, saying, hey, believe and repent. Romans 10.9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So Paul's writing this letter to the people in Galatia to combat that false teaching. And the way we ended Friday was he just went to Jerusalem to help with some Christians that were in need. They'd gone through a famine and he took them some gifts. And now, uh, while he was in Jerusalem, the, he's, he met with some Jewish leaders. And he said, I met with them in private because I wanted to explain to them the gospel that I'm preaching in Galatia and he took Titus with him, one of his best friends in the world, this guy named Titus, he took Titus with him as a convert because Paul had led Titus to Christ. And Paul was Greek. He wasn't Jewish. He was a Gentile and his life had been changed. So he, he took a walking testimony of the conversion, of the, of the cha life-changing power of Jesus. He took it with him to meet with these Jewish leaders. Now in verse 3, that's where we pick up today. And, and Paul's writing about this encounter. He's writing about the meeting with the Jewish leaders to the people of Galatia as proof to the fact that, hey, this is a message that has been preached and it is the right message. So in Galatians 2, 3 and 4, he says this, But even Titus, who was with me, talking about when he met with the Jewish leaders, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Jesus Christ so they might bring us into slavery. So Paul's saying this. He said, look, I took Titus with me and even the Jewish leaders didn't make Titus get circumcised. And he said, so he's using that as evidence to the people of Galatia that this is the gospel. This is the truth of the gospel. Now, there were some in Jerusalem that actually did want Titus to be circumcised. You can read about that in Acts chapter 15. And in there, uh, Paul called them false brothers. And then in that passage we just read, Paul goes on to accuse those teaching uh, requirements of works in the Christian church of being spies. He said, hey, if you're in the faith, if you're going and preaching a false gospel, then you're a spy. So that's simple. That's verses 2 and 3. But where I'm going to spend a little bit more time than I normally do on these mornings is, uh, is on the now what. But the so what, here let me summarize it. Paul is making the case for Christ. What Jesus did on the cross was enough. There are no other acts of righteousness that it takes to become a Christ follower, to have salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says, It is by grace you've been saved through faith and is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God not a result of work, so that no one can boast. So the reality is, it is by faith we are saved. And that's the message Paul's getting across to the people in Galatia. You have been saved because of your faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So now what, what do we do with it? Here's the deal. Most, okay, I gotta be careful. Most churches or most religious organizations or even denominations, 
they operate under a, an unspoken set of rules in their mind. And here's what it is. They say, okay, you have to believe what we believe. We have to behave how you think we should behave. And then you belong. Believe, behave, belong. The kingdom of God is different. The kingdom of God is upside down. What these false teachers were saying was you have to believe what we believe. You have to behave how we think you should behave. And then you can belong to our group. You can belong to our community. And that's what was driving Paul crazy. Because Paul understands that the church and the kingdom of God is called an upside down kingdom in Matthew. Because Jesus flipped everything upside down. And here's the way churches should be. Here's the way that the kingdom of God is. It says you belong. No matter where you come from, you belong. And our hope and our prayer is that you will come to believe. We preach and we teach and we sing because we want you to believe. But the moment you walk through the doors of our church, you belong. And our hope and prayer is that you'll believe. And the behave part, it's not up to us to teach people how to behave. The church is not in the behavior modification business. Here's the way God works. You belong and we will pray and we will teach and we will preach and we will hope that you come to believe in the Christ that we believe in. And once you go to Christ, God takes care of the behavior it's called sanctification of the Holy Spirit. That's how God grows us to be more like Him. And so the one, one of the reasons why I love the temple is because people belong, and then we teach and preach, and we pray that they will believe in Jesus, and then they behave, or they become like Christ. And that's why we do things like this on weekday mornings. That's why we're doing the Wednesday night teachings. That's why during the school year we have midweek and all men's group and all sorts of discipleship opportunities. But the reality is, is in the kingdom of God, you belong, you believe, and then you become like Christ. And that's what Paul's saying. He's saying, hey, I am a product. I can be a preacher of grace because I'm a product of grace. And you can't preach grace until you're a product of grace. And the reality is, in God's kingdom, and we as Christ followers today, let's offer grace because we're a product of grace. No matter where we go, the deal is belong, believe, and then we all together become like Christ. We don't have to pretend like we're perfect. We don't have to pretend like we have it all together. People love talking to people who's been through some storms. Hey, until you show me your scars, I don't even want to see your trophies. And that's the reality. That's the kingdom of God. And we all have scars. And people are looking to belong. And then we pray that they will believe. And then let God take care of how they behave. Man, let me pray for you. This morning, God, I thank you so much for the people watching um, live and those that will be watching later. And God, thank you for your kingdom that says all are welcome. Come on. God, thank you for inviting us to have a seat at the king's table where we can have fellowship with you and get to know you in a relationship, not a religion, not a denomination, but in a relationship, a friendship. God, I pray blessings on the people that are watching and the families they represent. Thank you for Jesus and what he did on the cross. And thank you today um, that you brought us in and we belong to you. And help us as we try to become more like you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. That's it for this morning. I'll see you back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.